All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell Inspiron 5558. All right, the reason the battery's up is because liquid was spilled in it, so I don't want to have the battery connected. All right, if you want to remove the battery, you slide this over. It will pop up just like that, and you flip it over like this. Battery model number is right there. Uh, M5Y1K, so if you need a new battery, that's what it is. If you put a new battery in, you put the back in first like that, and you swing it down and just click it in place. All right, anyways, this is very similar to other models I've worked on. We're going to be using a JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern, I remove them. All right, so we're going to have those two. We're going to remove those first. Then we're going to get under here. There's this little um, place to get under with a pry tool. I just use my fingernails, and then you can pull up just like this. Okay, if it doesn't come out over here, you can work your way over there and then pull over there. Same thing over here and pull over there. All right, then we just flip the whole thing up and slide it out. And here we go. Oh, it looks like some of these clips are busted or one of them. All right, and there's actually some liquid in here as well. So we got to be careful. You can see there's some water in there. I want to dry that out. <clears throat> I have a feeling this computer is going to be toast because that's a lot of water. Um, for it to get all the way here, especially since they said they spilled it through the keyboard. It has an SSD in here. Hopefully the drive survived. We're going to flip this latch up. Oh, let me zoom in here and pull that out right away so we don't have to worry about it. So flip that latch and then you can go ahead and pull this cable out. You might have to pull up slightly as you pull it out. <clears throat> now the hard drive or SSD is completely disconnected from the computer. All right, there's four screws holding this in place. So let's go ahead and get those four screws out. All right, this one, this one, this one, and the last one here. <clears throat> All right, now that we got those four screws out, we can get under this tab and pull this up. And there we go, we have the two and a half inch SATA hard drive or SSD. Um, you can pull this connector off. Usually the way I do that is I get my fingernail between this part that's sticking out and the connector itself. Um, or actually if you can get in here, that would work best. You can use like a little pry tool. And then what I do is I pull it slightly. And if you have a very thin pry tool, you can get it in this gap here. Okay. Sometimes I can get my fingernail in there and then you can use that gap to help pull it out. Um, if you can't do it from here, sometimes I don't like pulling it from here because this black plastic separates from the darker gray. Um, so I like to try and get something in this gap if I can for this design and then do that. You can see I can kind of pry it out and then once you do that you can go ahead and pull this whole thing off and that's how it works. Okay, I'm going to leave this on though because we don't really need to take that out. Oh, it looks like there's water on there so I'm a little worried. If water is in this hard drive connector, that's not good. Um, the hard drive might be toast and then they might lose all their data. So. Let me pop this out again because it looks like there's some water in here. Hmm. I don't know if there's like water inside of it, but <sighs> okay. All right. Anyways, we're going to set this aside now. It does have four screws holding this uh, bracket in place. If you want to change yours to a hard drive or SSD. All right. <clears throat> Here's the RAM here, two tabs, pull those to the side, pops up, then you can pull this out. This is PC3L 12800S, so you can use any PC3L 12800S RAM. All right, and we'll put this back. Huh, there's like a hair stuck to it. It's a little dusty, so I just cleaned it off a little. Okay, we can also pull out the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. In this case, because liquid spilled in it, I'm going to pop that out. So you can use like a small flathead screwdriver. I'm just using this uh, and pushing it. And then when you push it in, it springs backwards and you should be able to pop it up. Come on. Oh, that clip's being really strong. It doesn't want to come up. Let me go ahead and use the flathead screwdriver since it's being tough. And we're going to go ahead, same thing, pull it over and then pop it up. There we go. And, oh, there's water in there. That's not good. So there's water in the CMOS battery slot. That's very bad. This battery was wet as well. <clears throat> That's a lot of water. I'm 
about ready to just tell the customer um, it's probably dead and you're gonna need to just pull the data if possible because water was also in the hard drive. Um, so next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna zoom out. You're gonna have to hopefully be able to know what's going on from here. We're gonna remove the screw that's holding the optical disk drive or CD drive, whatever you wanna call it in place. All right, there's just one screw holding this. Once we pull that screw out, we can actually get this out. So I use my fingernail and just go up and down as I kind of wiggle and pull on it. And you should be able to see this metal bracket thing sliding forward a little. Okay, if it's not coming out that way, you might have to use a little um, uh, folded out paper clip, something like this. There's a hole on the side here, okay? And you basically get the paper clip in there and then you can use that, wiggle it and it will pop open. Then you can pull this out and you can grab the rail after you pull it all the way out, grab here and same thing, wiggle and pull and there you go. Then I'm gonna close this back up and pull this out the rest. There's a little water in there as well. Okay. The customer told me that they tried to dry it with a hair dryer. You don't want to use a hair dryer because you don't want to blow the water into the computer. You want to pull the water out. So uh, what you do <coughs> if you spilled water in your computer, uh, usually if it's in through the keyboard, I would recommend opening the laptop, have the screen hanging over the edge of your desk, get some paper towel or um, any towels and just start patting dry the whole keyboard. Once you're done with that, <clears throat> you want to take a vacuum, if you have like the one with the little nozzle, and just vacuum, pull the water out as much as you can. Again, if you use like a hairdryer or a blower, you're just pushing the water into the computer and you don't want to do that. So yeah, keep that in mind. All right, we're going to get the rest of the screws out. There are a lot of screws. Again, you want to keep them all in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. And if you mix them up, you can damage your computer. So if you don't know what you're doing, um, you might want to stop now. But make sure, like I said, put the screws flat side down on your desk in a pattern that you remove them. So like that. And then you can see like this pattern. There's like two here. You can see there's three screws in the CD drive area over here. So you just put them in that pattern on your desk. Um, preferably on a separate desk if you can. That won't You won't accidentally knock them over. <clears throat> That will help so that you don't have to worry about um, things in the way. All right. And then we got some more screws going along back here. Okay. All right. Very important. Make sure you get all the screws out. And again, make sure to keep them in order. For the most part, a lot of them are the same or similar. Um, the two in these corners are longer. The hinge ones here are longer. Um, this one is skinnier, and then these ones are short and flat. But again, even knowing that, it's best to keep all the screws in order because you never know. Sometimes it could be slightly different and then you can damage something. All right, there's one down here in this corner. <clears throat> I believe on this model, we also have to remove um, the keyboard before we can pop everything out. So there's another screw like right here. Okay, there's more water in there. Also, these two screws were pretty long. Okay, we're gonna remove the wireless card as well. Uh, I don't know if I should zoom in. There's one screw here. Okay, let me see. I'll try and uh, zoom in to show you how I remove the antennas at least. So here's the antennas. I go from the tail. Uh, black wires going to the black arrow, white uh, wires going to the white arrow. But basically I go from the tail and then since the screw's out, I'm going to push down on here to uh, pop it down. But basically we're just pulling the antenna tail straight up. So if you have the thing secured, just pull straight up like this. Okay, and there you go. <clears throat> we have the antennas disconnected. Be careful with these. These wires and solder points here tend to be weak on some. So if you don't need to remove it, don't remove it because sometimes the little uh, piece that it clicks into down there on the wireless card breaks off and gets stuck in the connector. It's not very often, but it does happen sometimes, so avoid removing it if you don't need to. Okay, there's even water on the back of the wireless card. Jeez, this thing, he must have like drowned this thing. That was That's a lot of water, especially after he already flipped it over and dried it. So, yeah. I don't know. Also, I sometimes get customers that say they didn't spill much liquid on their computer. And when they say not much, they mean like a whole cup of water, which is a lot of water. So 
yeah all right we got that screw what else we got one more down here <clears throat> we got three more it looks like so that one then we got this one here and one more in this corner I don't know if there's any others missing but that's what I see for now okay let's take a look I think we got them all there's more water here that I missed let's actually pull this ram stick out okay I'm gonna pull both sticks of ram out just in case because I don't know if there's water stuck on it or anything <clears throat> okay you can see we have the um, speakers connector here. I'm going to pop that out, although I don't think we need to pop it out right away. We can probably wait till the thing is open. But the way I do that is I go on both sides and then I kind of just wiggle the connector. Left, right, left, right, or up, down, up, down, whichever you're looking at. And it should eventually walk its way out just like that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put these two screws back in. And the reason being is we need to open up the hinges and the computer without these two screws here, the hinges are really weak. So I'm going to hold these, put these two screws back in. All right. Once we do that, we're going to carefully open it up. I'm going to hold on the screen here and slowly open this. And again, we do need to pop out the keyboard. So we have, I use this really thin metal tool, but you can use anything like a butter knife. You can see uh, in the camera, you can see where the little clips are. So basically you get in there and then you kind of just wiggle it to get in front of the clip and then underneath. And you can see it's now popping up. We're gonna go to all the clips and do the same thing. Okay, we got that one, that one, this one, and last one. Okay, once you get all the clips up, you can carefully pull it up. I also kind of pull the sides down. So I use my palms to push down while I pull up here. And you can see it's kind of popping up. All right, and then we can slide this out. Oh, there's a lot of water under here. Okay, there's lots of connectors here. We got the keyboard backlight connector and the keyboard connector that we're gonna disconnect first. So keyboard backlight connector, flip the latch up and then pull that, oh my God, so much water. Then flip this latch up and pull that out. Yeah, look at that. There's so much water in here. This is why you don't use a hairdryer or a blower to clean up liquid damage. Um, the only time I would use a blower is after I dried as much as possible, like this whole keyboard, if I can get all the water out here, and then there's probably going to be some water stuck in the keys, and um, vacuum doesn't do so well with that. Uh, so while I have it completely disconnected, I can actually go in and try and blow the water away, but you don't want to blow it into the computer when you have like the whole computer assembled, because then you're just blowing all the water into the motherboard area which you don't want like that's the worst place to get the water if it was just in the keyboard we'd probably be fine but uh he, since he blew the water into the computer um uh, yeah we're probably gonna be screwed anyways we got the um power button connector here we'll flip this latch up and then we'll pull this out just like that there was a little adhesive make sure that you disconnect that carefully okay yeah, there's a lot of water. Even after drying it, it's still... Okay, then we have this latch. This is for the uh, optical disk drive connector. So flip that latch up and then put this back or take that out. Look at all that water. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but there's a lot. Okay, and then we got this connector. Um, I believe this is for the touchpad or trackpad, uh, but we'll see when we pull the thing apart. I'm pretty sure it's the touchpad or trackpad connector. All right. Then we gotta lift this up and pull this one out. All right, this one, they actually folded it in a way that it goes underneath, so it's a little tricky. I might have to use a little tool to get this up. So we'll go under from here, lift that up, and then pull that back just like that. Okay, there you go, try that out. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this keyboard out and I'm gonna use my powerful air blower to try and dry it as much as I can. So let me do that and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So we dried this out best we could. Okay, a lot of water was coming out from underneath this cable. Hopefully we'll see if it survived or not. Probably not. All right, next thing we gotta do is remove all the screws from underneath the keyboard, okay? Trying to get it centered so you can see. 
I guess there's no screws on that side, but all right, let's go ahead and remove all these screws. Again, keep them all in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. And again, mixing them up can cause damage to the computer. All right, so two, three. This is very similar to a lot of these Dell Inspiron models I've worked on. Four, five, and six. All right, don't forget, we still have the two screws from the hinge that we need to remove. Um, and again, I like to be careful with that because the hinge is a lot weaker without them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hang this over the edge of my desk and then I'm going to remove those two screws while it's like this. Okay. Sorry if you can't really see, but okay. Hopefully you get the idea here. I'm going to get these two screws out. One and this one. Okay, now that we got those screws out, we should be able to separate the two layers here. So we're gonna separate the keyboard and the palm rest. Okay, so what I do is I get my fingernails in here and then I'm gonna push with my thumb on the palm rest, not the touchpad, make sure you don't push on there. And then you should be able to pop the clips just like this. Work your way over, again, avoid pressing on the touchpad. Okay, and we're just gonna work our way down the sides. Okay and the edges, and I'm gonna carefully close it a little. All right, again, you wanna be very careful because the uh, hinge mechanism without those screws is a lot weaker, okay? All right, so now we got that. We're gonna carefully pull up here. You can see these cables. You do wanna be careful and move them out of the way. All right, and we're gonna carefully continue working our way. I'm gonna slide my thumbnail up the edge here. On this side, nothing else to go on. All right. If you're very careful, you can close this up or we can go ahead and put the hinge screws back on. So let's go ahead and actually put the hinge screws back in temporarily so we can close the laptop again. Okay, we're gonna slowly close it. I'm gonna use the screen there and then I'm gonna just rotate and twist this down. All right, and we're gonna take those screws back out. Then we should be able to pull it the rest of the way. And actually we didn't need to open up the screen to do that, so. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can pop this. Actually, yeah, we did, because we are gonna have to thread the cable through that that optical disk drive cable we're gonna have to thread it through the bottom later okay so now that we got there this is a difficult usually part I'm gonna pull push with my thumb here and pull up here and see nope doesn't want to come out so we're gonna work our way further over here and pull up here the clip like holding here is usually really strong and that's usually what ends up holding it let's see if we can kind of pull up um here because usually what i do is i use my thin metal tool here but i'm going to see if i can do that without doing that all right there's a clip here um it might help to use like a small flathead screwdriver in this case so you can actually see oops let me zoom in you can actually see the clips here so you can kind of pull this clip back and then pull the cover up all right come on yeah it's being tough let's try from the middle one here Pull that clip out of the way and come on. Yeah, no, nope, I think I'm okay. It did come up a little bit. So you can see now we kind of got this up and we're gonna have to go along the side and or this and do the other one. Same thing, we're pulling this clip away or sliding it back. Oh, I guess that clip just broke off. Okay, and let's go ahead and continue pulling. Yeah, actually, let's try doing it the other way because this is being difficult and one clip broke off. Let's see if I can do it by lifting this up and then I'm going to pull this over. Come on. Yeah, it doesn't want to come up. These are just going to be a pain. OK, 
Okay, so I'm pushing the whole thing frame over this way as I'm trying to lift it up. And the reason is to try and disengage the clips, which it did disengage this clip as well. Let's see if we can disengage this last one. But again, these sideways ones are always a pain. I don't know why they're so strong like that, but pushing this frame in and pulling this up. Come on. Let's see, there has to be an easier way to do this because usually I just brute force and pull it. So I'm going to pull this up. Let's see if I can flex this over that way. So I'm going to go on both sides and I'm going to flex it a little. Nope, doesn't work. What if we flex it inwards this way? Nope, it doesn't work. Okay, I guess we're just going to have to brute force it. So I'm going to just pull up here. Okay, and come on, let go. I don't think, is there a way I can just push something here? I don't know if you can see in here, there's a little thing down there, but it's not coming out. Hmm. From the back here. Oh, there we go. What is this? Is this a piece of plastic? Uh-oh. More piece of plastic came out. Okay. So, where's this getting caught in here? So you can kind of go under here with a flathead screwdriver and then you can kind of like just rotate it to pop this out, but I don't know. These clips are really strong. I think, I think we just pull it hard. Yeah, okay, there we go. And all right, we're gonna carefully lift this up because again, the optical disc drive is under there, it's being thread through the keyboard area. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that? Can you see it? There, okay. And so that threads through that hole there. Okay, we got the whole piece out. You can see there's even water in the speaker area. So you're gonna have to dry that out. Okay, pretty much I'm gonna have to dry out this whole thing. There's water all in this as well. Okay, it's a lot of water. Yeah, there's water also up here in this keyboard area. I think they toasted it when they blew all the water into the computer. There's water up here. Okay, so basically now I'm going to take the motherboard out and everything and then I'm gonna use the air blower to just blow everything completely dry and hopefully we'll have some luck. Um, usually what you wanna do, okay, so right now we don't have the screws all holding the hinges down. So I'm gonna to have to, when I get my fingers in, I'm gonna hold my thumbs here to help push the hinges in place. And I'm gonna open this a little. Okay, and let's see here. So I'm gonna carefully, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-plug the power button here. It probably all drained already because of the liquid, but I'm gonna press and hold the power button now for um, at least 15 seconds. Their power button feels broken too. Huh. It doesn't click. All right, well, we're gonna hold this for 15 seconds to drain any residual power. And then we're gonna go ahead and take everything completely out. All right. Hold it for about five, six more seconds. Okay, let's go ahead and disconnect or flip that latch and pull that cable back out. I'm gonna now pull on the hinges to close it down, all right? Because if you just pull on the cover, you're gonna end up ripping these screws out. Okay, <clears throat> so these hinge screws, I don't think we need to remove the whole screen assembly, but let's go ahead and do it anyways, I guess. All right, we're gonna pull the whole thing out. So we have this USB board here, one screw. Take that out, <clears throat> lifts up. Comes out like this, it looks dry. So this one should be okay. I'm gonna just brush the dust off. Okay. And there's actually water caught under there. Let's flip this latch and take that out. 
Okay, so we'll set this USB board aside. Um, again, there's water all under here, so let's go ahead and try that. All right, let's go ahead now and see about taking the whole motherboard out. We're gonna now disconnect the LCD LVDS connector. Let's zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. There's a flip latch, flip that up. Once you do that, you can go ahead and lift and pull that back. All right, I'm gonna make sure it's all dry. You have the fan connector. I don't think we need to remove the fan connector. Um, <clears throat> so we'll leave that there. Uh, to remove the fan, you actually have to take the whole heat sink out. So we're not gonna do that. Either that or we have to take the whole motherboard out, which is what we're gonna do. And then we'll go from there. Anyways, let's see. There's some corrosion here. I don't know if you can see that white powdery stuff forming here. Okay, that's corrosion. And there's some gross stuff there with some water. So we're gonna have to dry that and clean that. Okay, what is that? What is that? Come on, let go. It moves around, but oh, there we go. Okay, let's see what else. So this isn't attached to the thing. Usually I thought there would be adhesive here, but I guess not. All right, we got one screw holding the motherboard down right here. <clears throat> is that it? Can we lift the whole motherboard up now? I guess that's it. All right, now we can get this motherboard out. You lift it up at an angle and then slide this back. Oh, looks like there's a cable underneath the DC jack or charge port connector. So we're gonna have to go under there and we're gonna grab that and wiggle that connector out just like the other ones. And there is some water under here as well. So I don't know, things aren't looking good for this one. All right, I'm gonna now take all the individual components out dry them up and then we'll be back. Oh, there's a lot of water on that as well. Okay, so let me go do that and I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm gonna use the toothbrush, brush off, the, loosen up the dust, use my air blower, completely dry it. Um, and then we'll put it back together and see if we have any luck, but most likely it's fried. All right, anyways, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and actually pop out the power button if we can from this one. Hopefully it comes out with just that one screw. Okay, lifts up and then pulls up. And here we have the power button. And yeah, I don't know, this power button's not clicky. Okay, I feel it a little bit now, in the very center. Anyways, we'll see. Hopefully this power button is okay. We'll put this back in. Sorry, I know it's, let me zoom in here a little bit. Okay, goes in at an angle. Get that in. There we go. Then we'll get this screw in. All right, let's see if we can also pull out the touchpad or trackpad because that's had a lot of water in it. I'm gonna zoom out here, okay. And there's three screws it looks like. So we'll get these three screws out. And let's see if we're lucky. I don't know, but okay. Can this even lift up or does it push down? Hmm. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to carefully open up the screen and see if we can push the touchpad. Does it go out or in? Okay, pushing on this does nothing. So this can kind of pop up. Hmm. I'm not seeing how this touchpad would come out. There's probably a way to do it, but I'm not seeing how. Like there's a metal plate and there's plastic. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm assuming somehow this plastic can unhook or something and then the touchpad can fall through. I don't know. Like I see these holes. Oops, sorry. I see these holes here. I'm assuming we can somehow unclip this and then push this down. Does this hook, 
just this pull away and then unhook. Hmm. Is that working? I don't know. I do see like some kind of mechanism here. Um, yeah, I think I think you're supposed to pull this away and then the touchpad can fall in. It looks like that worked. What about this side? Why is this side not going? Okay, I think I need a better tool to pull this away. Let's get that in there, pull that aside. And there we go. Okay, so now the touchpad can fall through. Uh, basically, there's a metal piece that sticks out over this way, and the plastic is underneath, so it can't go out. So you pull that tab, and then it can go through that way. And now we can kind of pull this downwards, and there's this adhesive holding it. So I'm going in between here. You can see we can, oops, sorry, we can pull this downwards. Okay, and then this needs to flip up so we can rotate it and get that out. Let's flip this latch up to get that out real quick. The touchpad connector. There we go. Flip that and pull that. And now we can flip the touchpad up, rotate it, and it's stuck on something. Oh, there we go. And here's the touchpad assembly. I'm going to see if I can blow dry this a little bit more so I can now that I can get in the edges um, but not really much else to do there and then we'll reassemble this. All right see you guys in a bit. All right I'm back and here you can see a closer look at the mechanism that latches so this is where the clicky part is so basically the plastic latches into those holes and goes up. All right so I'm going to carefully open the screen slightly going to slot this back from underneath in like that and then rotate it back over and then line these up and then this uh, the front part you just click it up you can see and then this plastic will grab it again again you just pull these plastic tabs out to the side and then you can push the touchpad or trackpad down they have these holes here that make it a little easier and if you have a good thin tool like this then you can actually use that to help pry that over and that actually worked a lot easier, all right? All right, anyways, there we go. Put that back in. We're gonna get this back in as well. Most likely getting all these parts to replace this isn't gonna be worth it. Um, this connector, I don't know if you can see, but it slots, it's weird design. It slots in between. There's the like cream colored or whatever. It slots in between, so you have to make sure that when you put this cable, you have to go from there and slot it through both sides, so it's gonna be a pain. Come on. Because you have to slot it through, there we go. So it slots through that, and then it slides into place. All right, make sure that goes in all the way, then flip that latch back down. All right, and let's go ahead and reassemble this thing and see if we even have any life at all, okay? Zoom out a tiny bit more. Okay, so we got this. Next, we're gonna get the motherboard or logic board back in. It goes in at an angle like this. Um, we do have to reconnect the DC jack or charge port connector first, so line it up. Make sure that you put it the right way. You can see they put a black dot, um, but basically these exposed metal pins on this side need to go facing down at the motherboard, okay? line that up and then pinch that in. Make sure you pinch it in evenly. If you do need to replace the DC jack or charge port connector, there's one screw holding it in, then you can pull that up. All right, we're gonna flip this back over. Carefully at an angle, get the motherboard into place. Slowly lower it down. Make sure that you keep the wireless antennas out from underneath the motherboard. Okay, and this slots in. There's a like big metal protruding piece that lines it up so you don't accidentally put it in the wrong way. There's only one screw here, M2 by 3L. So it's a two millimeter by three millimeter, two millimeter wide, three millimeter long, or two millimeter diameter, if you wanna use the correct terms. Okay, so we got that screw in. We're gonna put the LCD LVDS connector back in. Make sure that latches up. 
Okay, then we're going to get this cable back in. All right, make sure that it's in all the way. And then slide your finger over to latch it down. All right, and then also make sure that the wires are guided properly. You don't want to accidentally smash it and then damage those cables. <clears throat> okay, what else we got here? I didn't mean to do that. Flip you. Okay, so we got the USB board over here. I'm gonna put that one back in. Make sure this latch is up. We're gonna put that cable back in here. It helps to kind of do it upside down, I guess. And then latch that down. Flip that back over. You do have to put the this headphone jack in at an angle somewhat, and then drop it down. All right, get this screw back in. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> Let's see, do we need to put the other stuff in first here? Let me make sure I'm not missing anything because I did take out some screws and I'm not 100% sure which order. Okay, I don't think I need to take out any of these. We could put back the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery if we want here. So it goes in like that and then you just slide it over and push it down. All right, we also have the two sticks of RAM. We can go ahead and put those back in. So this goes in like that. And then this one goes in like that. All right, we can't put the wireless card in yet because it has to go onto this thing. Let's see, am I missing anything? I have three screws out that I'm not 100% sure where I took them from. I think they are from this one. Or are they from another computer? Because I didn't, don't remember taking screws out from the inside of here. Okay, anyways, next thing we're going to do, let's zoom out. We have to get this uh, optical disk drive connector in. So you want to angle it down and get it through this hole. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that on camera at all because the plastic's in the way. But basically, we're going to get that in there. And then we slide the whole thing over. Okay, and then when we're closing this down, you do want to make sure the wireless antennas do come back out through that little groove there. Okay, so we got that. All right, so next thing, we're gonna clip this back down. Okay. Hopefully I didn't mess something up. It doesn't wanna clip down here. Oh, this is not lined up right. Let me check here. No, okay. So the charge port DC jack thing is kind of popping out so we want to make sure to get that back in how did that pop out I didn't even pull that up there we go okay so I had to tuck that back under there okay now we should be able to clip it all back in perfect clip that all back down all right first things first we're gonna put back the hinge screws If you want, now we can actually put back all the screws. And yeah, there's not really much else to it. We're just gonna reassemble everything. If this video helped you out, please make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, um, so other people can find my videos. And, oh, did I put a wrong screw in a wrong spot here? I'm gonna have to pop, oh wait, no, that's right. That's the hinge one, okay. All right. This is the other hinge one. All right, let's uh, get the three hinge screws in. Oh, I didn't finish. <laughs> if, it, if this uh, video helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. And if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's go ahead and get the rest of these screws in and that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, these. I don't know where the 
these three tiny screws. Where did I take those from? I don't think I took anything else out. I'll rewatch my video and see if I'm missing anything. If I am, then I'm going to have to take it apart again and get those screws back in. Anyways, let's get the speaker connector back in, just like that. Okay, we're going to get the optical disk drive back in as well. Line that up, wiggle it around, push that in. All right, we'll get this one in. Okay, let's get these bottom screws. We have this one here. This one at this P. Okay, and we got this one up here. the three down here. Oh, that's what I missed. Oh no. Okay. I missed the uh, touchpad screws. <laughs> Let's get this back out. I was like, I know I had three screws from somewhere. Okay, that sucks. All right, well, we gotta open it back up to get the touchpad screws back in because those are important. And that sucks because the screws are underneath the motherboard, so I actually have to take everything back out completely. <laughs> All right, well, it is what it is. Let's get everything back out. this again. Okay. And get this guy back out. All right, what else? Three screws here. three out what else wireless antennas they'll come out as we lift okay let's pop this back out again come on there you go probably doing this for nothing because the computer's probably not even gonna turn on but let's do it anyways all right up, get the wireless antennas out of the way, lift it up. I think we just lift it and pull it harder. It should kind of just pop out. Come on. Nope, it doesn't just come out. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know why this side is always difficult to get out. There we go, that side came out. And come on. Don't forget the optical disk drive connector is still under there as well. There we go. Slide that out. Okay, let's get this guy back out. Technically, we'll just lift the whole thing together. Take that screw out. Move the LCD LEDs connector. Okay, and let's flip this thing up. <coughs> Jeez. Okay. Carefully rotate this. And let's get the three screws back under for the touchpad, trackpad. And the last 
screw. All right, so we got those three screws back in. Let's go ahead and get this back down into place. Make sure the wireless antennas are out of the way. Get this back lined up. Make sure this goes back into the little notch that came out last time. Make sure that latches up. Get the LCD LVDS connector in place. Flip that down. Get this cable or this screw back in. Okay, this screw back in. Now I'm doing I'm gonna do somewhat of a speed run since we already did all this. Make sure to push that cable back down into there, slide it over, get the wireless antennas out on top, get this all lined up, put that all down, put this in, put that in. Alright, get all these screws back in. Again, if this video helped you out, please make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. And if it has uh, if helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot. If you could uh, share my channel with others and if you could watch a few of my other videos and then comment on those videos as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. And yeah, you're welcome to stay as I get all these other components back in. Most of it's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Screwing everything back in and clicking things back into place. All right. One from there. This guy back into place here. That one back here. Don't forget the hard drive SSD, flip that latch up, get that cable in. Okay, flip that latch down, get that lined up. Get the wireless card in. It goes in at an angle. And this goes down. Okay, make sure to get the wires in. Line it up. And click it down. Click it down. Perfect. All right. Get the little bracket thing back on top. Screw it down. Good. All right. Let's get the last few screws in and then get the keyboard and everything back in. Screw up here. 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 And here. All right, we can actually, oops, don't need to zoom out that far. We can put the bottom cover back on. This thing's kind of gross, even though I wiped it. Okay, get this cover back on, goes in at an angle like this, and then you click down the edges around, just like that, these two screws, alright, let's flip this over, 
fit the screws under the keyboard in place. Make sure to reattach all these cables, the power button cable here. Okay, put that latch down. Optical disk drive connector here. Okay, touchpad or trackpad connector here. Alright, let's get all these screws back in. latches up and let's get these connectors back in keyboard connector Put that latch down keyboard backlight connector there we go. Put that back down then we slide the bottom of the keyboard in first and then work our way from the sides and then across the top and there we go now we just get the battery in and we're good to go they didn't give me the charger, so if the battery's dead, I don't know. But uh, let's go ahead and get this in. It goes in at an angle. Click that down. Flip this back over. We'll push the power button. And yeah, nothing's happening. So I'm pretty sure it's completely dead. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Hopefully it helped. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye. All right, so I actually plugged in my charger and it actually turns on now. So let's see here. I think the power button is being weird though. So I don't know. Let me see. I push the power button. Yeah, the power button's like not too clicky. I have to press really hard, but you can see it's turning on. And yeah, it's working now. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.